I am very pleased to welcome you to this talk, Reading Literature to Develop Advanced Writing Competencies, a Multiliteracies-Based Approach. Our speaker today, whom we're delighted to welcome, is Kate Paisani, Associate Professor and Director of the Basic Language Courses at Wayne State University. Her research interests include the multiliteracies framework, the use of literary texts across the curriculum, and foreign language teacher development. Her work has appeared in journals such as the Annual Review of Applied Linguistics, Foreign Language Annals, uh, the French Review, and the L2 Journal. Uh, her current project, she's currently co-authoring a methods book in the multiliteracies approach with Heather Allen and Beatrice Dupuy, that's French, to be yeah. published by Pearson. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Baisani. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> I'm going to try to talk without a mic. Can you all hear me? Yeah? yeah? OK, great. Um, so I want to thank Susanna for inviting me to come here. I always love coming to Chicago, um, such a wonderful city and so close to us in Detroit. And I want to thank everybody who helped organize the trip and who everyone who's going to entertain me while I'm here in Chicago uh, today. As Dolly already said, I'm going to be talking about reading uh, literature and writing. And I'm going to be framing it within the multiliteracies approach. And let me just give you an overview of the talk today. <clears throat> so first I'm going to talk about challenges related to developing advanced writing competencies. I'm actually going to ask you to tell me what you think some of the challenges are. Um, and then I'm going to propose that the concept of literacy can help us overcome these challenges as a framing concept for foreign language programs. I will introduce the multiliteracies approach, which is the pedagogical framework I'm going to use to frame the examples that I'm going to walk you through today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about links between reading and writing and the role of literary texts in writing development. And then finally, I'll give you some examples examples based in creative writing tasks. So I wanted to just get your feelings about what challenges you see um, related to the development of advanced writing competencies in foreign language. Anything you, that comes to mind? You're all here because you're interested, <laughs> presumably, so any ideas? Appropriate language use, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other ideas? That ties in perfectly with what I'm going to talk about today, so I'm glad that's a concern. Anything else that's challenging for you? Yeah. Well, in the population we have here, do I see um, some of the issues we have are with heritage language learners uh, that have uh, registered the use at home and. Uh, mm -hmm. Transferring those skills to uh, formal standard um, use of writing. Right, so understanding conventions and grammatical structures and how those function in appropriate ways in writing. Yeah? Uh huh. Anything else that you see as challenging? Just giving them a sense of what a complete sentence is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Even at advanced levels. We have yes. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Well, we do at my institution, too. We're very similar to yours. So yeah, I come from a similar they context. Guys, they, can put, they can stop 15 ideas in eight lines and think that that's a sentence, right? So just gotcha. the notion that a sentence, one sentence, one idea, or right. uh, that there is a correlation between the idea and the grammatical structure, so to speak. OK, yeah. That's actually not something that I, won't talk, uh, that I will talk about today. That seems more of a composing issue. And I'm not really going to talk about composing, but rather thinking about genres of writing and how they might help develop writing competence as a whole. But I, I agree with you that, I mean, at least for our introductory students, it's a huge problem. And it's one of the things that our instructors work with a lot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to focus on several challenges. And most of them stem from the well-known language literature divide in collegiate language, foreign language programs. As has long been argued in applied linguistics research, undergraduate students entering advanced level foreign language courses in US institutions of higher education do not possess advanced level language abilities. This is due in part to the two-tiered structure of many foreign language programs, also called the language literature divide. This bifurcation is characterized by fixed lines of demarcation between introductory and intermediate language courses on the one hand, and advanced literary cultural content courses on the other by imbalanced governance structures and personnel divisions, and by differing instructional goals and teaching techniques. So essentially, we often find 
TAs and part-timers and non-tenure stream faculty teaching in the lower levels, and then tenure stream or tenured faculty teaching at the advanced levels, teaching this more sophisticated content. And we also see differing instructional approaches. We often see communicative language teaching predominating in introductory and intermediate levels. And then at the advanced levels, it's typically left up to the individual instructor. We, we want to keep our intellectual freedom. We organize courses the way that we want to, and there often isn't coherence within that level and between that level and introductory and advanced language courses. The 2007 report of the MLA Ad Hoc Committee on Foreign Languages, highlighting the urgent need to overcome departmental bifurcation, called for replacing this two-tiered language literature structure with a broader and more coherent curriculum in which language, culture, and literature are taught as a continuous whole. And my hope is that the um, framework that I'm going to talk about today will help you see how that might be able to happen. <clears throat> Two additional challenges related to this are that there is often little focus on development of content knowledge in advanced language courses, and at the same time, there's little explicit focus on development of language competencies in advanced content courses. So the idea is that when students take advanced grammar or advanced writing, they're not really working with content when they're doing that, right? They're focusing on learning grammatical structures and mastering those, so all language learning is reserved for those courses, and in their literary cultural courses, typically, there is an explicit attention to develop the kinds of things that you were just talking about, right? How to use idiomatic expressions appropriately, or how to read and apply certain strategies. So <clears throat> even though we're at advanced levels, we're still leaving language development to language courses as opposed to in all courses of the curriculum. And as we know, foreign language development is a long-term process and one that is not linear. Students therefore need linguistic support across the curriculum, much as they need exposure to various literary cultural content across the curriculum, from beginning to end. The last challenge I want to point out is that there is lack of coherence or a lack of coherent, frame, coherent frameworks for organizing curriculum and instruction. That is, we're not doing the same thing at lower levels that we're doing at advanced levels, what I pointed out before. And again, I'm hoping that what I talk about today will help you see a possibility for doing that. So let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. So what you have here is a quote from a top-selling French cultural studies textbook, which says, students in their third year of French should be able to put their linguistic skills to use. This book does not focus on skill development and language acquisition. Right? It focuses on content, because students already know how to use the language, is the assumption. Okay? And this reflects the assumption that advanced language competencies just develop on their own, without explicit attention to language. Right? It's sort of this organic process. So the challenges I just discussed are related to advanced language development in general, and I'd like to point out a challenge that's specific to advanced writing development. And that is a sort of a two-fold challenge. The limited scope of foreign language writing tasks to which learners are exposed, and the limited scope of links between literature and writing. Okay? So often students don't see that the literature that they read can inform the writing that they do or be models for the writing that they do for instance. And students often in advanced levels aren't writing in a range of genres, nor at introductory levels are they writing in a range of genres. Typically they start by writing descriptive texts, writing informational texts, and then when they move to advanced levels they're all of a sudden expected to do analytical work in writing. And this causes problems for learners, right? And as a result, development of students' advanced foreign language competencies may be hindered because we're not exposing them to a broad range of textual genres related to writing, nor do we always make explicit that what they read may serve as a model for what they write, including literary texts. This dynamic makes it challenging for students in advanced level courses to respond to the cultural and linguistic content of literature in a variety of ways, such as summarizing, analyzing, arguing, or writing creatively, particularly because they're asked to carry out these tasks in a foreign language and not in their native language. <clears throat> So I'd like to take a moment <clears throat> excuse me, to talk about my rationale for focusing on writing, and not just because Susanna asked me to talk about advanced level writing, but also because I think writing is an important thing to think about when we're talking about doing lots of intensive reading at advanced levels. <clears throat> so why focus on writing? For one reason, it allows learners to use language forms to develop mastery, if you will, of the code, but within a context. Right? And they're able to see that different manipulations of language result in different manifestations of meaning. And they're not able to do that in lots of other contexts. Right? Writing also provides time 
for learners to process and create meaning, just like reading gives them time, whereas in speaking tasks, they don't have time to process and create meaning because this is all simultaneous, whereas writing is recursive, they can go back, they can revise, right? Um, writing also provides an opportunity to move beyond functional language use, which is typical in introductory and intermediate courses with a CLT orientation, to create imagined worlds of their own design. And this is linked to reading literature and writing creatively, which is what I'm going to talk about in a little bit. And then finally, <clears throat> writing can create a context for merging language and literary cultural content if students are writing about literature or even writing their own literature. Okay? In an effort to overcome the artificial separation of language and content in collegiate foreign language programs, recent research has advocated situating texts, literary and otherwise, as the focal point of instruction across the foreign language curriculum. In particular, the construct of literacy has been proposed to serve as an organizing principle for this kind of text-based curricular reform. And I'd like to explore the meaning of the concept of literacy for a moment. And I'd like you to just take a couple of minutes, or just a minute maybe, to write down your answers to the following two questions, or reflect if you don't have a piece of paper. Uh, what does it mean to be literate in a language? In other words, what abilities does literacy entail? And what is literacy? What are the first three words that come to mind? Don't overthink it too much. So just take a minute to reflect. If you want to write down, go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's tackle the first question. What does it mean to be literate in a language? What do you have to be able to do to be literate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did everybody hear that? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So read various types of media. Okay, and to be able to think about it, to what it reflects on with its meaning, or yeah, okay, over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so literacy entails grammatical abilities. Yeah, okay. What else? So literacy is about language. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting from all of you. So let's look at this example. Okay. I Googled it, posted it on my blog, and then I IM'd my friends. As literate readers of English, what do we need to know to be able to understand this? Is language alone sufficient? No. Does everybody need a little caffeine? <laughs> what do we need to know to be able to understand this? What else is, in what else is involved besides language? Context. What's the context? OK, technology. What culture do we need to know? Youth culture, okay. What else? Yeah? Okay, we need to know what Google is. We need to know that Google can be a verb, right? Google can't be a verb in every language. In French, you cannot say Google. I asked, <laughs> okay? Okay, you need to know the conventions of capitalization, right? Because it's different from standard written language. 